Hi, everybody. It's PJ Kwong with another Skate Ontario Town Hall. I am joined by none other than Executive Director, Director Lisa Alexander. My goodness, Lisa, we have had quite the week already. It's only Monday. Oh, my goodness. So we're talking about return to play. We're talking about steps that people can take. And there have been some very exciting developments since our last town hall a week ago. So just mm -hmm. give me an overview. And then we're going to go to a document that sort of outlines everything for people. Yeah. I'm really excited. I feel like I'm going to be so much more popular this week than last week. <laughs> you know, Maybe. I, I, <laughs> you know, I think last week we were talking much more in the theoretical. We shared the return to play uh, protocols and told people that they could start to read them and start to prepare and that we had taken a baby step. And I think that this week, super excited to talk about a much uh, bigger step that I think is going to help a lot of coaches and a lot of skaters. You know what's so exciting about the big steps that are coming up? Um, that is that we have three coaching legends who are going to join us in a little bit. Uh, Tracy Wayman, Tracy Wilson, and Brian Orser. And they're going to talk about what it's like to get uh, skaters back on the ice because they've got a little bit of experience already with that, with, of course, high-performance athletes. But in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about some of the things um, that we know. And we're going to keep tonight's, um, uh, tonight's session about the stuff again that we know about. So let's talk a little bit about the steps that we know about for right now. Yes. So um, excellent steps for this week. And I think this town hall is extra timely because probably most people saw that some of this news is very hot off the presses from this afternoon. Um, so the first thing that we really wanted to talk about tonight is um, our expansion of the level of skaters uh, that we're allowing on the ice. So you can see we're expanding still within uh, competitive skaters. So we are um, adding pre-novice. And uh, so we're adding the pre-novice level along with, of course, continuing with our novice junior senior. Star skate, I think, is going to be the biggest thing that people are interested in. We are now adding skaters from the star five to gold level. Uh, Pre-juve, juve, um, and also adult singles, pairs, and ice dance. And in ice dance, or sorry, not ice dance, in synchronized skating, we will also be adding the novice, intermediate, open, and adult categories to the junior and senior skaters. So very exciting news. Um, you can note that, of course, the rinks still need to be ready to open. And you recall that I said last week that, you know, Skate Ontario, we you still need to follow the Skate Ontario return to play protocols. But most importantly, the rinks have to be ready to open. And what we hope is that because if uh, that, you know, what we hope is that um, because we are now opening up more categories, that this will really allow people to take the tools and talk to more rinks about opening. Um, very importantly, and this is the very hot off the presses information from today. So we have talked a lot about this gathering size of five. So as of today, that is still applicable. But starting Friday, that gathering size will increase to 10. So I think that that is, I think that that is uh, obviously a, a big game changer. Still, obviously, not all the way to where we'd like to be, but really exciting that we get to go to 10. And then basically, slow and steady wins the race. Yes. And you know what? I think we really want to emphasize that point. You know, it's very important, right? Like this, this doesn't mean that the coaches need to rush and send skaters back onto the ice at 9 a.m. tomorrow, right? Like we want the coaches to take this news. We want them to carefully consider their planning. You know, for a lot of people, and I think for most of our skaters, we know that they may not have usually been on the ice at this time of year anyway. So no rush, proper planning from the coaches. And remember how long the skaters have been off the ice. You know, you need to take into consideration, um, you know, are they physically prepared to return to the ice? You want to ease them back into that physical activity if they haven't been doing it. Because, you know, we want to, we've done such a good job, I think, of being patient and of being measured. And, you know, nobody wants to see uh, the athletes go out and um, uh, get injured. 
You know, we've already had a great question about Special Olympics. Um, I will admit my bad. I forgot to look it up. If we don't have the information yet, um, yeah. will we be able to have people contact us at communications at skateontario.org to get that information about Special Olympics? Yes, please. And same as usual, if we get questions, if we get questions, we will answer them. Um, and, and, you know, and I think the key thing to remember is that we do have all of our documents. I mean, obviously, you know, nobody wants to hear me go through the details. They want to get to, you know, they want to get to the coaches. Um, but on our website, under the COVID-19 page, there's the return to play uh, box that walks everybody through the details. So we have to update the return to play protocols so that they will make the 10 person gathering size effective as of Friday. And very important for people to review the other pieces that are there, the health screening and remembering yeah. that, that can be done verbally. Um, but people have to use the session tracking sheet and nobody should be going anywhere near a rink unless the waiver is signed. And that's for everyone's protection, for the athletes, the coaches, the parents to make sure that uh, people are informed. It's really important to go look for those tools and make sure that you're set up uh, before you go. We're going to take one question before we introduce our our our, our coaches, our guests. Yes. Um, and this is from Melanie George. It, it was also echoed by Joni McPhail. The gathering yep. number increase of 10, uh, does it apply to the whole province, even where phase two has been delayed? Yes. See my smiley face? Yes. It has been approved for the whole province. So phase two, um, and we have received confirmation of that subsequent to the Premier's announcement. We received a statement from the Minister confirming that that is true everywhere across the province. So while the areas that are going into phase two will have some different services than phase one, the gathering size is across the province. Um, very uh, important to remember, of course, not till Friday. 12.01. 12.01, yes. On Friday. So basically yeah. stay up all night Thursday, it's fine, and then you're good. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Lisa, you and I are going to stand by and we're going to talk to our coaches. I'm going to introduce them one at a time. I am delighted to welcome Tracy Wayman. Hey, Tracy, thank you for joining us. And then I am also delighted to be welcoming, where is she? There she is, Tracy Wilson. Nice to see you as well. And then um, not last but not least, Brian Orser. So Hello. listen, guys. One at a time, what I'd like to talk about um, is I want each of you to talk a little bit about you've been back on the ice with some of your skaters. How long has that been and were your feet sore? <laughs> Tracy Wayman, you go first. Um, okay, well, we got the news um, on May 26th that we were allowed to go back on the ice. So. Uh, I put together, I know it was novice and higher, but I only rolled out uh, the senior skaters for the next three days. So that was the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th. And we did one hour each day. And then the following week, I rolled out uh, novice and junior skaters, and some did three times a week, some did five times, one hour a day. And it was just a very gradual process. So. For the first three days, it was only seniors um, and very, very slow. Like it was it was just basically getting a feel for the ice and getting that contact. Um, they, all of those high-end skaters, novice and higher, we had been doing Zoom the entire time. So they were on a really um, extensive off-ice program so most of them they were ready to get on the ice and yeah. uh, but it was a lot of stroking it was a lot of exercises uh i think after the first day i allowed those senior skaters to try one jump and it was pretty well a single axle and then as it went um they started to get that feel on the ice stroking was still a huge thing and everyone then realized how quickly things were coming back. So all the skills came back quite quickly after all the exercises, after getting a feel on the ice. So 
it was it was actually a pleasant surprise to a lot of these skaters because in the past skaters really panic if they're off a couple days and it it's a great sort of lesson to know that everything is there and the ones that were ex like really physically and you could see the ones that worked so hard off the ice um they were ready and their skills were almost better like their jumps i was like wow like this is good but definitely extremely extremely slow getting there a lot of stroking um a lot of exercises a lot of just jump exercises um a lot of wallies <laughs> uh so it definitely was a gradual process and after this I guess this is the ninth day and some people have skated more than others. Pretty well, everybody is doing the jump skill that they left with. Wow. That's we great. haven't introduced anything new or things that they were working on before. And definitely the repetition is a lot less. And um, at times, we would go ahead. It was really, really important to monitor what happened after the session, because a lot of times they would do that hour session and get off the ice and, and muscles and certain muscles were working more. And then the following day we would have to pull back and okay. do a couple of days of, okay, they went to this stage and, Ooh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of force in some of those higher jumps. And so just, coaches being there uh my i myself uh managed all of that with those students and pulling back if there was any sign of muscle fatigue um just just stretching those muscles that need to be stretched and so it's just very very careful 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 monitoring of the uh skater so Tracy and Brian, you guys are coaching partners. What about you returning to the ice? What was that like for your students at your rinks? Rink. Go ahead, Tracy. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, well you, yeah. So for Brian and I, the one one advantage we have is our age, because um, back in the day when we were competing, that was so long ago. We used to have to sign a waiver saying we would take at least a month off the ice consecutively. Uh, at the height of our, you know, training for the Olympics, May was totally off and often um, with the ways the rinks were back then, they, we'd lose the ice. So we'd be off for six weeks. So we're pretty familiar with what that's like and how it is possible. And I think Brian and I are also familiar with the benefits. So we were kind of excited um, to kind of go through this with the skaters. And if, you know, if there's uh, one word of advice, um, it would be caution. Like there's no rush. You want to take your time. There was a couple, for a couple of reasons, you know, you, you read through the protocols, you go, yeah, yeah, I got that safe distancing. We'll ask this. Well, da, 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 da. But as soon as you get back in the rink, it's like, oh shoot, because it's so unfamiliar. You have to, I did anyways, or Brian had to keep reminding me, uh, Trace back up and, you know, to keep your space. Um, and I think just to really, take it slowly and I think the one thing with the skaters as as well as Brian and I be excited were excited so were the skaters and the damage is the it can be that if you let that go and you let the skaters just kind of go with it they will overdo it as Tracy um, said so you really have to be careful to manage so what Brian and I um, uh, really worked on was the foundation and the stroking. And so if you're, you know, if you're looking at this new group coming up, you know, you get the music going and you focus on the knees and the knee rhythm and you focus on the twisting and the ab work because that's their core. And Brian still has his trademark fast feet, right, Brian? So he was showing off all the time, all the fancy footwork, which, which kind of helped the skaters get back on form. Okay, so I have a great question oh, for Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, you weren't expecting to get this question, but this is from Kenny Rose, a great Skate Ontario coach. So let's just talk levels. Before we go to preparation and back to our coaching experts, are we talking about skaters who've already competed Star 5 or are planning to compete Star 5 in the upcoming season? It's for people who are planning for the level that they are planning to compete at. 
right? Okay. So it's our skaters who are intending to compete, but we're we're uh, supporting people in uh, the level that they want to compete at. It's those skaters who can go back. Terrific. Okay, coaching experts, one tip each. When uh, we're talking about preparation, let's say you're a coach and your skaters haven't been back on the ice. I want one tip from each of you. Um, like a, a secret tip that nobody else knows that you can share um, on getting your skaters prepared to go back. So just your trademark secret tip that's going to be secret no longer. Brian Orser, I'm starting with you. Well, I think the main thing, I mean, it's the same as when we're going through a season and getting ready for competition, it's just preparation. So coming back onto the ice, you need to prepare, be prepared. We off, we had all kinds of things for the athletes, whether it was the um, off-ice jumping classes by a Zoom and they did uh, Pilates and they did ballet and some of them were doing some psychology work and we emphasize a lot of imagery and um, vis visualization and things that they don't normally um, find the time to really work on. So they did because they had to and they were kind of exercising those skills because we weren't on the ice. And just the very short time that we were on the ice, we could see the benefits of that. So planning, preparation, being ready to get back on the ice. Tracy Wilson, you get to go next. Have fun, have fun, enjoy the experience. There's no rush to get anywhere. This is playtime. I mean, we how rare is it that we don't have that uh, competition etched in the book that we're counting the weeks. So experiment, play, have fun with it. Find out, get in touch with why you love to skate. You've been off the ice for a while. You get back in touch with that and the music. And and I think you about how grateful you are um, to be out there. So yeah, go out, have a good time, no rush. And Tracy Wayman, what about you? One tip that you can offer the coaches for preparation? I, I think definitely a patience, like patience, and really getting that connection to the ice again. Um, it's I, what I loved was seeing everybody's face just getting back on the ice. At first, they were like, whoa, this feels weird, but just the pure joy and um, just work that connection and patience because really it does come back fast. You know, it's interesting, Tracy, you talked about uh, stroking and Tracy Wayman, you did as well. So tell me a little bit, did you have already prescribed stro stroking exercises that you were introducing to your skaters in these first couple of weeks? Or is this something that you already do? I mean, what were the first steps? I know people who, uh, Tracy, your, Tracy Wayman, your student, uh, Roman Sadovsky, he's a budding filmmaker and he's got a YouTube channel, Romsky. Anybody can check out, especially his um, uh, return to the ice. It's quite interesting because he talks about just how strange it was to be back on the ice. So let's talk a little bit about the practical aspects of stroking and yeah. the other things that you can reintroduce to your skaters. It's what Brian and I do uh, with all of our skaters. So whether it's our wonderful adult group, our elite internationals, or the young kids coming up, we have a basic um, foundation exercise we use for warm up. It's you know the uh, the sculling or the bubbles or whatever you want. It. And you know and Tracy Wayman talked about the connection. And during those exercises, you're connecting with the ice. You're working on the knees and you're finding your balance and um, I, I also really believe with any stroking exercise you need to do it at three tempos we'll get very comfortable with the slow tempo but then you take it up one notch and then you go super fast uh, the very very quick tempo will show you where your balance is off and so then you can just work to find it and you do the very very simple um, get yourself warmed up because for a lot of these young skaters, we want to build up their little muscles and the cardio and they may have been doing some sort of off ice training, but it may not be particular to figure skating. So you just, you can work on the cardio along with the stroking and, and then the skills can get, you know, more difficult to more complex uh, footwork, but all of those turns, those turns will show every kid what they need to know about being ready for their jumps. And I'm thinking that all of the off ice training in the world does not really speak to that kind of balance that you need with 
gliding mm -hmm. and turning. Um, so because the, the contact floor is static and mm -hmm. the contact with the ice is, well, let's face it, ice is slippery. There, I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> and not again, you used up your turn. <laughs> um, Tracy Wayman, um, what kinds of exercises can you offer um, some of the coaches who are just getting back on the ice uh, with their skaters? Yeah, I think that there's um, most of the coaches, if they they have exercises in place or um, maybe have been to seminars and uh, seen exercises. So there's, the, the, I mean, there's so many that you can be doing. Um, the same as with Tracy, we do a lot of stroking at our club. Um, it was already in place. So each of the skaters, I would say, would have about an hour of different exercises that they can keep going and, and, and make contact uh, with the ice. Um, I know Tracy said something earlier that, um, you know, maybe an idea with the little kids is, um, you know, you take them as a group and, and if they have um, an hour ice, like have somebody just take the full group. And, and you know, Tracy, Tracy mentioned that to me this morning and I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. When those little kids first get back on the ice, um, what I might do is bring in our stroking coach, uh, Vesna Markovic and say, you know what, let's do a class for the first week. Let's go twice, bring those kids in and she will just conduct that class and um, do as many stroking, as many little hip twists and just contact with the ice, but it's very supervised. So it's not just get on the ice and everybody does their own thing. So I think that's a really a good approach. And I think definitely with those young kids, I'm going to be taking that approach. <laughs> I've got a great question coming you, from <laughs> Wendy. Um, and that is, let's talk a little bit about snags. Were there any snags in um, getting back on the ice with the return to play protocol, um, the arena set up, social distancing, communications, any of the things that you wish you had known then that you now know would and would be helpful to other people uh, other coaches in particular. I'll let you handle this, Brian, because you are all over it. And he's nodding. See that? <laughs> I kept looking at Brian. <laughs> you know, Skate Ontario was very, very helpful for helping us, you know, set up the guidelines. And together we kind of worked on that as well um, with the protocols from the from the club. So for us, it was the cricket club together with Skate Ontario. So, um, we kind of you know tracy and i went in the day before the like the official opening and we kind of did a little walkthrough to see what is this going to look like so i would advise that for sure say you know they're going to come in this door they're going to sign their waiver here now they're going to go and they're going to put their skates well they're going to warm up in this particular area you're going to put their skates on here they're going to exit through that door the next group will come in you know, the, the seats will be cleaned and now the next group comes in. So it sounds complicated. However, it was with small groups of three or four skaters, it was it was nice and it was nice, you know, to even to get on on the ice with them. And you have to take them by the hand and you have to spoon, spoon feed them all the basic stuff from the beginning. So um, it ran very well. And um you know, I was kind of really digging this whole thing for, and kind of hoping that we can continue this for a while because it was, and as we got into the next week, we we engaged the other coaches and and um, had them participate with all of the skaters as well. So it wasn't just, you know, me with my athletes and Karen Preston with her athletes and Ernest with his athletes. It was, we all worked together. So it was a great exercise for the coaches. It was a great exercise for the for the for the skaters, it was a really great exercise, I believe, for the parents to see that we have such a trust between all of us, and um, we made it work. And it was really a, it ran it, it was beautiful the way it ran. So we'll take it to the next step starting Friday, but it was nice to have this to kind of ease our way into it. You know, it's interesting. Lots of people always have lots of questions about team coaching, and back when I was a skater that wasn't really a thing. Um, and I think that we've evolved in a way that is reflected in society about, about teams working together. Um, do you find that this whole COVID crisis has helped to enhance this idea? Um, anybody, anybody? 
I do personally. Okay. Um, Tell me. I think it's been really cool because, you know, you get forced into a situation that you think ha that's impossible four kids, one coach with the numbers with, or three kids, two coaches. But what it does, it forces you to be creative. And then you start trying new things. And it actually just, you know, the odd time Brian and I were able to take, you know, three skaters, the two of us. Um, and I think that to me is so fantastic. Whenever I get to work with Brian or any of the other coaches in the club, I'm constantly learning. And so it's such a benefit. And and also I find often the coaches will say to me, what was that you said? And why did that, that? you know, so you can really share information. And I think the big winners, um, not only are the coaches because we learn, uh, but also the skaters. But so it's got Brian and I and Aaron at the rink talking about about how we can we can work this out throughout the system. I mean, we always have done team coaching, uh, but this is in sort of a whole new way as we're teaching to work more side by side. And I hear Tracy talking about that too at her rank, bringing in extra help for stroking. And so I, I think that's uh, that could be a really great benefit out of this. So Tracy Wayman, I'm going to come to you for a second, and that is that. Um, you know, we're all teachers in the coaching world. I mean, that's that's what we do. So have you had to adapt your coaching strategies to accommodate um, COVID-19 and the return to play? And if so, how have you adapted your strategies um, and what can you share with us? Um, I, I, I think that my strategies have been about the same. Um, I've had to definitely adapt a lot. Um, I'm in it, it. I'm in a different situation. Um, because right now our rink is not open. And really, we have no idea when they plan to open. So what happened with me was it was okay. Yes, we were allowed to be on the ice and and I have to tell you skate Ontario wow they were like superheroes on that um <laughs> they did so much work and they they worked so hard and and you know at, at one point I was just feeling really lost and um you know they worked so well with us coaches and um coming and just on the phone until midnight and and putting something into play and um we're we're very responsible for putting this in place and getting us on the ice so early. So, you know, I, I really appreciated that. So we get all this and I'm excited and I get the call and I'm like, wow, okay, guys, we can get on the ice. And then it became a whole new um, problem because our rink wasn't open. Uh, we had to find ice time. And the first three days we found ice time in sort of, a, it was like a, a third of a rink ice size the expense was woo, like over the top so i think that at that time when i brought the seniors in it was like 80 dollars per person like for an hour on a third of an ice rink uh so the expense was huge renting ice um so that became a whole big different thing um and then what what happened afterwards is there was a few of us that came together and coaches that were in the same situation so in richmond hill we have two very competitive clubs and um you know we're trying to work together i had uh, rob burke and i we are working together and so i think that the way there's not a lot of facilities open so if you're in that situation it's it's a really really good idea to look who is around you and really work together. Like we need to work together at this time. And so after coming together, we, we really got something in place this week and I was so concerned about it. The price still really, really high. So if that can go to 10, that's gonna make a huge difference in price. And that is gonna help a lot, um, but yeah. Ice and the <laughs> Technical issues. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
The, you know, it's interesting that we're talking about rings because one of the questions that keeps coming up in, in the comments is, do we know for sure um, what rinks are going to be open or not? And as is that something that sort of Skate Ontario can have any information about, or is that something that people have to take directly to their municipalities? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I can say that's, you know, over so many of these town halls, you've heard me say that, you know, for some stuff, we just don't know. And certainly the rink situation is now the newest thing there. You know, I know, um, you know, talking with some of our coaches, I think it was David Islam who said, I'd rather have, you know, this, this problem to solve, of, you know, moving on to this step. But it definitely means that people are going to have to work on their relationship and talk to their municipalities. And we are, if you want to talk to your municipality and you're looking for some help from Skate Ontario, let us know. We've received some good feedback uh, because the municipalities are looking for clear ideas and direction too. So because, you know, thanks to these coaches and our high performance coaches, we have a tested set of um, return to play protocols. That's a really useful tool for going out and talking to your facility and your rank. And the other thing that I can confirm is that uh, Hockey Canada and Ontario Hockey Federation have started to move towards, they are going to uh, start to allow individual training. So no team sports, no hockey, but individual training. Um, so that should be helpful in showing the rinks that, uh, that there will be a real need for ice. So hopefully that will start to accelerate some of that thinking. You know, um, the other thing that we've kind of been talking about is communication. So I want to know from from the coaching experts, um, how have you found the communication aspect with your parents? Um, how do you remain in touch? What kinds of things do you talk about? Do you talk about cost? Do you talk about the season that and the, and the fact that we don't know what's going to happen in the season? How have you kept the communication open? I think um, you, the main thing is you have to be truthful and you have to have facts. So as we were, you know, preparing for that, you know, May 27th day, you know, you know, the week before it was announced that we could go back on the ice, but we did, not everything was in place because it kind of came as a surprise for everybody. So I think it was just, we have to be, very honest with the parents and we have to have the facts and we have to be truthful and we can't you know to say hey we're gonna move it. maybe tuesday maybe wednesday we have to get the facts first and then tell them and I mean, that's where skate ontario was so helpful for us so and then as far as you know we, uh, during the time that we were off it was you know there were there were regular conversations and um just about the kids being fit and what they could do and what we could do in advance, whether it was music, whether it was costumes, you know, even some of the, some of the kids even did some of their choreography via Zoom. And uh, that was a great exercise for everybody. So um, the parents have been, have been pretty good and they've, um, they're, they're understanding. It's, it's, uh, it's a tough one for everybody. And I, um, I can only imagine if you're at home and you have, a few kids and <laughs> and, you're, and you're trying to do your work and there and the kids are jumping around and you know they just want to get them back to the rink and i totally get it i think um i think that's um right now with it rolling out um the lower levels that also takes time so now that we have gotten this news um i think that there has to be a step we we need to be communicating to the parents we have to have something in place how we want to do this and then approach the parents um it, there is an expense in there too so you need to see uh, how how everybody is doing financially and then come up with a program and um definitely we need to uh, educate about all the safety rules. So there's there's really a lot to do before we actually roll out those that next group of skaters. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah, 
But yeah, I'm, like it's it's I'm like I'm, I'm thinking yeah. if somebody wants to if they're announced tomorrow, and I've already like I have all my papers in place. I've got sort of an idea what I want, and still, it is going to take me a good week to make a plan, put everything in place, and contact all the parents. Um, you know, get together, explain to them because now you're 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 doing a bigger group and explain to them the safety um, and this is how this works. Because you know, as as Brian and Tracy said, we and it was a good way to roll this out because there really was only four skaters or three skaters, two coaches, five people. It was the perfect way that <laughs> we could familiarize everything. Um, we learned how it can be done. Um, and it, it's it's basically a new, a, a completely new thing for all of us. And so now we need to also educate that next group. Yeah. And yeah, and I think it's so, I mean, it's so fantastic. We were all like hoping and praying and putting out positive vibes to get it up to the number 10, because in terms of ice costs, um and scheduling and actually you know for groups to come together to share ice it just makes it that much more viable but also it, it's just tricky because we all take the responsibility very seriously that we have to do it right mm -hmm. because if we don't do it right it messes up you know for our club and huge fines or you know for the uh, for the section and so that preparation is sort of key. And I'm glad I have Brian for that to help me uh, help <laughs> me in the right direction. Do, do you know what's interesting? Lisa has talked lots of times about not wanting to have to pump the brakes. So yeah. lots of times there have been, uh, you know, talk about, well, if we throw everybody back on the ice and then we have to pump the brakes and close the rinks and then start all over again, that slow and steady uh, wins the race. Lisa, there's a great question for you here mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Coach Carl Van Leuven wants to know about. Um, 10 skaters on the ice and two coaches at the, behind the boards. What What's the ruling on this? We are still, so the the only difference is, is the number in the gathering, but the people in the gathering are, are still the same, right? So the definition that we have said, if it's the group of people that has arranged to come together for the training session, then those are the people who count in the gathering. So for now, um, for the, you know, for the definition here, that's 10 total. So that still includes coaches. Uh, where have you guys gone for inspiration for some of the exercises that you put on the ice or some of the ideas about keeping your skaters engaged while off the ice? Where did you get your inspiration? For our stuff on the ice, we went way, way, way back. Brian and I have had some of the, over the years, some of the very best. <laughs> so we're talking back to Linda Brockman and Ushi Kesser. Just kidding. So, yeah, it's like <laughs> all, all the good stuff in skating. You know, figures. I forgot to mention that. Like, just go back into your past, what you did, you know, back in the old days. Those that's what we need to do. So uh, figure eight, three turns, brackets, all of that. So uh, but also um, we have are blessed to be affiliated with some young coaches who get how to do Zoom or technical wizards. So they've been able to reinvent themselves and do a lot of um, work off ice by Zoom. And then Brian and I have worked with skaters. Uh, in different countries who had ice uh, actually by Zoom, which was also really interesting to us um, how successful that was. So, you know, as, as much as none of us have liked anything about this situation, um, there has been the odd uh, good thing to come out of it. And I bet none of your wonderkind uh, young coaches would have cut Tracy Wayman off, thrown her off the whole thing and brought her back miraculously like I did. Sorry, Tracy Wayman, I owe you one. Um, if there is one, if you guys could each give me one kind of lesson that you've learned, one unexpected uh, bonus that has come out of this situation, I'd really appreciate that as a coach. My gosh, you know what? We, when Tracy and I got back on the ice and we were, you know, starting slowly and doing some exercises. We actually, there was one session last week where we actually developed three different exercises. So of course we have, 
in our pocket, we have a bunch of exercises and for certain reasons, whether it's balance or agility or speed or power, whatever, we, wherever, wherever we need to go. But then we were playing around with some things with some of the kids and we came up with new exercises. And, and there were a couple of kids that actually contributed and they were like, hey, what if we do it this way? What if we tuck our foot behind here? And we were like, wow, that's Whoa. really good. <laughs> so we actually had that time and that connection and the patience that Tracy Wayman was talking about. And we came up with some really cool things. So um, th that was fun. And that was, for me, that was, that's been the best thing so far. I love that. What about you, one of the Tracys? Um, I, I think out of all of this um, was all of this uh, Zoom. I mean, this Zoom, it, it brought in another whole way to communicate and do classes and keep in touch with skaters that sometimes you teach maybe just in the summer and you can stay connected with. So that whole um, connecting thing or, or doing an off ice class that somebody is offered and just joining like a, on a Wednesday and everybody getting together. So the things that were possible on Zoom were incredible. And it would it's going to be great to use Zoom and the on ice and and put them both together. Definitely. Terrific. Okay. Tracy Wilson. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think for me, it's, you know, you, you get into the season and as a coach, you know, you're, you're living and breathing skating. You, we, you can't be in this, in this business and sort of take it lightly, lightly, you take it home. And so a number of hours on the ice and thinking and the whole bit. And I think to actually pull away and absolutely have to take that break and then it was such a great opportunity coming back on the ice to remember why it is you love to skate and what it is you love about it. And so those moments that Brian was talking about, the teaching moments and coming up with new stuff, um, and, but just really having the time to appreciate it and get in touch with it was a great reminder of, right, going forward, I can't lose this in busyness. You know, busyness is not worth that. So just for me, that's what it just reunited me with what the, what the meaning is for me in, the, in it. I, I think that we can probably say, and Lisa, you can probably speak to this, um, the fact that the municipal, municipalities have had to kind of learn on the fly as well. Do um, you think it's easy? Like what, what about this is challenging for them, if you could imagine? I think, you know, the municipalities are in the same boat with all of us. Like you've got a whole bunch of people, none of whom have done this before. So, you know, they are looking for a nice, safe, clear path forwards. And, you know, the great thing about us having had an early opportunity with a small group and, you know, our, our coaches mentioned it, is it, it gave us the chance to really draft up some protocols that now people can go confidently to their municipalities and say that, you know, this has been, this has been tested. We've tried it. It's been, it's been working. And I, you know, so I think that that will be, I think, I hope that that will be helpful. Um, I've got to say, okay, guys, so um, here's basically what we need to know. We need to know that um, as of Friday at 12.01 a.m., when we're all going to be on the ice, not, um, but that the group is going to move to gatherings of 10 people, which is great news. Um, and that's across the province, regardless of whether who gets to be um, in phase two or stage two yet or not. Um, you've got to keep the parents informed. You've got to make sure that your skaters are prepared. Um, and you have to make sure that you reintroduce the ice um, in a way that makes sure that they're not uh, subjected to injuries. I think that that's probably safe and that um, uh, we're all trying to sort of figure things out as we go. Social distancing, all of the health guidelines, of course, have to be uh, adhered to from our coaching experts. And then Lisa, you get the last the last thought. So you're gonna, you gotta, got a moment to think about it, but I want one tiny piece of advice that you guys can each offer your coaching colleagues um, and aside from wishing them luck at getting back on the ice, um, one piece of advice you can offer them or their skaters about what's coming next. Take your time and enjoy it. Love yeah. that. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's definitely enjoy the experience and really understand that it comes back quick and enjoy that process to get there and take your time. Okay, Brian, it's up to you now. Gosh, pretty much the same as that. And I just, and be, and, and be grateful. You know, I think these kids are realizing now, um, you know, we're pretty fortunate. We were pretty fortunate to get in early. We were pretty fortunate to have a governing body that was so organized. And I think they're getting it now because a lot of the, the other provinces are not. So um, just be grateful. We were the first province to get back on the ice. And I think that one of the things that's wow. so remarkable about this is that kids um, are starting to realize that none of this just happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? There are hundreds, if not thousands of people behind the scenes who are working to try and get children back to their recreational activities, not just skating. Um, Lisa, you're up. Yeah. What would you like to say to our audience? And we got a huge audience tonight, by the way. Thank you everybody for joining us. That's amazing. Okay, Lisa. I, I just really want to say thank you. You know, like we we keep using this word that this is such a fluid situation. And I'm so, you know, Brian used the word grateful. I've been incredibly grateful for our community, you know, to the people on our team who worked on the standards, to, you know, our, our high performance coaches who've been so generous with their time, you know, to come on and meet and give us the feedback that we need you know, to be organized and feel confident in our protocols. And I really want to thank also the clubs that have started to give feedback and review the protocols and make sure that the stuff is easy to understand. I just, I feel uh, really great um, about our community. So I really want to say, you know, thank you for your patience and uh, thanks for all the input and help. And I want to say that this is a wonderful note to end this on. And it's from Eric, who wants to know that, who wants to say this was a great and informative town hall and that you coaching experts are helping so many skaters and clubs get back to the sport they love and it's a sport that we all love. So um, Tracy Wilson, Tracy Wayman, Brian Orser, our coaching legend experts. Honestly, thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of Skate Ontario Executive Director, Lisa Alexander and me, PJ Kwong, thank you, everybody. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. PJ. <laughs>